Hello, my name is Mario Guerra, and I will be presenting my portion of our group project for the autonomous signal detection. Phase one of our signal detection was done during the senior one process. This is where we set up a system that should be receiving signals from a simulated source uh, in order to extract uh, frequencies that we, we, we will be later using, with specifically a time frequency graph. The equipment that we needed was a Raspberry Pi uh, Model 3 version B and uh, Hack RF1, which is like a USRP, and this was used for our, our signal detection. The software that we needed was GNU Radio, and specifically for communication with the Hack RF, we needed the Osmocom library. For phase one, our signals will be gathered from what we have simulated and eventually be moved to LabVIEW. This would be an example of a waterfall that we will be having. As you can see, there's clear signal use here. This is not ours, this is just an example. Phase two, we will be beginning for senior two. Specifically, my portion entails of grabbing these uh, signals that we uh, have set up to receive um, and uploading them so that we can begin the deep learning and machine learning using the deep learning machine learning packets in LabVIEW. As stated, with these, this deep learning, we will be running uh, somewhat of this manner of system. This system is used by someone else where they have scattered images, label them so that the system can recognize specific different images around here. We will be doing the same concept, but rather than doing the scattered image, we will be receiving our own Im uh, signals, again from the time frequency graphs, and doing one at a time. Because we know what frequencies we are using and we know what they simulate, uh, an example, if we are running a frequency that simulates a cell phone tower, when we upload these images, we will title them as cell phone tower and be repeating that process over and over again so that it recognizes them. For phase two, we will be eventually grabbing this uh, the signal uh, detector and uploading them directly to LabVIEW so that when the signal pops up, the system will begin recognizing if it's a cell phone, a Bluetooth device, a laptop, a cell phone tower, and even to uh, let us know which carrier it is. Now, for a quick demo. For the demo, we were limited towards our simulation because we were not able to go into the lab. Eventually, we did receive access to the um, remote access lab view in our lab to run the simulations. So. Here we have our Osmocom source. Our Osmocom source uh, center frequency is set at 3.5 gigahertz with a bandwidth of five. This would give us our appropriate uh, range of signals that we will need, be needing to pick up. We will be displaying a scope sync and a waterfall sync. This will be showing us uh, any signals that are being picked up and their scope behavior. We will need a filter as this has a lot of noise, but like I said, we cannot simulate what we want specifically. So it will be picking up uh, my Wi-Fi and my cell phone device currently with very faint signals. As you can see right here, we have our waterfall source and our scope source. This is the behavior of the signals currently. We will be modifying this, or I will be modifying this, so that it's cleaner and you only see the spikes that we specifically need to see. And as you can see right here, we have two faint signals which will fall under, my, again, my Wi-Fi and potentially another device that's being used here, maybe mine. Once uh, we get the simulations properly going, we will see thicker signals um, and cleaner scopes here. These images will be extracted so that the system begins recognizing what it is that we're reading. So if I put in a source uh, that mimics a Bluetooth, we will be able to recognize it based on its time jumps and uh, where frequency band it is. We will be uh, showing that to the LabVIEW deep learning system and then it will when it repeats that same pattern, it will always recognize that as a Bluetooth for phase two. Thank you.